We have passed halfway through Matthew. Chapter 15. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem. So these are the ones in the temple. Saying, why do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? Not Bible. So the elders, remember we talked about the burdens earlier? The elders, the religious people were putting more burdens on the people. That, and we're going to read about one of those other burdens. That you can't find in the Bible. For they wash not their hands. When they eat bread. Now this is not, you know, a healthy concern of washing hands. It, it's become a ritual. We tell our children and we wash our hands, but it's become a religious order. Nothing wrong with washing your hands before you eat, but it's a law. Imagine being damned by the religious people because you didn't wash your hands. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you there why do you also transgress the commandment? Ooh. Not the tradition, the commandment of God by your tradition. So tradition by Jesus Christ is going against the commandment of God. For God commanded. Now, Jesus backs God's author of the commandments right here. This is the Ten Commandments, right? Exodus 12, 20. So what Jesus is now going to say is God commanded. God is the author of the Ten Commandments. Remember, he backed up Solomon. He backed up the Queen of Sheba. He backed up the whale. He backed up Jonah. Now he's just backed up the author of the Ten Commandments. <coughs> Honor thy father and mother. Okay, that's one out of ten. <coughs> Excuse me. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Jesus backs capital punishment. That's the law. That's what they're under. If a child did not obey his parents, he was to be taken out and to be stoned. That's the law. That's what God commanded. That's a lot different from washing your hands eating bread, isn't it? Man, it's... But watch what he says. But ye say. Who said? Not God. So, I just showed you a commandment of God, Jesus. Now I'm going to show you your, your tradition. Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Alright. When it comes time, if he has to take care of his parents. Well, I gave the money to the to the treasury. I gave the money to the tabernacle. I gave it to the scribes. I gave it to the Pharisees. I can't help you. I've given my money to the missionaries. I've signed a pledge with the church. And don't be fooled because there are churches out there who will say this today in 2016. And honor not his father or his mother. He shall be free. Now that's not God saying that. That's the, that's the scribes and Pharisees. Thus. Have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your traditions? So I would assume what Jesus is saying here is a bunch of people running around Jerusalem in Israel. They're not honoring their parents. And the Pharisees and the scribes are getting a whole bunch of money. Sound familiar? Ye hypocrites. Ooh. Nice Jesus. Calm down. Love. God just loved Jesus. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, now he is going now to quote the Bible, Isaiah 29, 13. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, 
and honoreth me with their lips. Oh, Jesus, sweet Jesus, my glory, Jesus. Oh, God, Jesus. I've heard them. I've heard them all the time. But their heart is far from me. It's pretense. And I got written right here next to this verse, and this is a prayer. Lord, I pray this is not me. I want my heart to be right with you all the time. Help me. Don't let your don't let your life ever be old mouth service. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. A lot of them will find themselves crownless. A lot of them will find themselves off into the lake of fire. But in vain, <clears throat> in vain, emptiness. Do worship me. See that? You can have worship without heart. You can go to church and not have your heart in it. You can listen, yeah, 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 and not have your heart in it. Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of man and not God. How's that? <clears throat> now, if you sit under a preacher and he's boring, he ain't got nothing to say, blah, 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 carrying it out. But, I mean, if you just won't listen to the word, you won't do what God tells you to do. But if you teach men's commandment, you know, the rosary, go sell magazines, which you can't find in the Bible. Studies show that self approved under God, a workman needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. Some of the stuff you can't find. By the way, that washing of hands was in the law. But it dealt dealing with the sacrifices and medical, especially leprosy. I wasn't eating bread. That's cleansing yourself when you're dealing with medical issues, that you don't pass diseases. <clears throat> and he called the multitude. You know, he's going to gather the people and said unto them, Hear and understand. Now he's addressing the people. He's just chewed out the religious folks. Now he's going to chew out the religious folks in front of the people. Is it wrong to stand in front of a church and declaim the, the, that church is wrong? Well, yeah. But if they come and challenge you, go for it. If you're in a public ministry and the Jehovah Witnesses come up to you and they start trouble, fire all guns when people are around. To show the people the error of the of the occult. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man. So we're going back to the washing of hands. They were saying if you didn't wash your hands, you defiled yourself. So what's the Catholic Church do? What do they have? When you go into the church, I forget what the name, you put your hands in water and you I forget I forget all those thank God I forgot those names you have to put your hands in the water thank God I'm still alive I used to drink out of it God protect me where was I 11 but that which cometh out of the mouth this defiles a man the words now notice how Jesus says the mouth. I mean, if you're going to eat something, it, it could come out the other place. That's not, he's not, he has changed his whole thing. It's not food. He's talking about the tongue. And the Bible has much to say about the tongue and your mouth and talking. We just read in, in Matthew 11, I think it was 23, 32, I, about every idle word shall be judged. So, then came his disciples. That's all he said, verse 11, to the people. What a rebuke to the... To the that which, uh, which goeth out of mouth does not defile a man, but that which cometh out of mouth. You know what he just said to them? When they came to my disciples and said, Why don't you eat with those with wash in? Their words condemned them. How's that? They opened their mouth to sin. Then came his disciples and said unto him, 
Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended? So even the disciples, like, you know, you offended them. After they heard this. So what Jesus did say, what did he say so bad that offended them? Must be the hypocrites. <laughs> so don't be shocked when people are offended at you when you use the word of God. But he answered and said, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it. I'll have to show them more. Look, come over here. Let me give you a little group hug. Suck some peanut butter out between my armpits, will you? No. For he answered and said, now this is the word of God, Jesus Christ. Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted. He just called them terrors. Remember that parable? Who planted these, father? The enemy. Has come and planted these. He just told him, prepared him for John 8 44, you are of your father, Satan. You know what he said when they said you offended him? Man, he went in there with, with double butt shot. He got him in both butts. Half a butt. They can't sit down now. He just called them to it. Shall be rooted up, destruction end of life what do you do when you pull a plant out of the ground it's going to die almost instantly let them alone <laughs> leave them alone and you know get back peter said it. let them alone leave them alone they be blind lead oh leading the police going at it again they be blind leaders of the blind and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the... How often has that verse been, you've heard that verse being quoted? And it's talking about the religious leaders. That's talking about the people who are in charge of Israel and the people that are following them. And they're going to fall. And when Jesus said... If the wise man that builds his house and doeth what I tell him is one that builds upon a rock, and the fool that doesn't do what I tell him to do, great is the fall. Scripture with scripture. <clears throat> then answered Peter, here he comes, and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Come on, Peter, get with the program here. Do not ye yet understand, and he's got to go further, that whatsoever enters in at the mouth goeth into the belly. Food. Unwashed or washed hands. And is cast out into the draft. Sewer. Toilet. Outhouse. So there's the food through the stomach, through the mouth. But those things which proceed out of the mouth cometh from the heart. Why did that person cuss? Because it's in his heart. Why does that person insult people? Because it comes from the heart. Why does that person use certain words that should not be used? It comes from the heart. And they defile the man. Now remember we just read that unwashed hands by the, by the men's commandment or tradition was defiling. Jesus says, no, that's not the case. Your wicked heart, with your wicked mouth, of your wicked heart, that is defiling. You know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. That's a, that's a lie according to Matthew 15. You can do much damage to somebody with your big fat mouth. How many hard working, how hard working women out there who have tried to be good to their husband and all their husbands done is put them down and, and disgrace them with the mouth? I'm not talking about beating them up. And it happens. It's wrong with our mouths. James has a whole chapter about it. And he says our tongues are set of the fire of hell. That ought not be so. For out of the heart, here we go, let your heart guide your way. Really? For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts. 
Where does sodomy come from? It comes from the heart. Where does all this going out, you're going to go kill somebody? So, evil thoughts. Murders comes from the heart. A shrink is not going to help you. He deals with the head and not with the heart. Adulteries comes from the heart. Fornications comes from the heart. Thefts come from the heart. False witness comes from the heart. Blasphemies come from the heart. It's all in the heart. Rejecting Jesus Christ comes from the heart. Saying there's no God comes from the heart. These are the things which defile a man. What? What we just read. Evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. But to eat with unwashed hands, defile not a man. <laughs> OPS. I can just picture just Jesus saying that with those Pharisees over there. Ugh. Hate that guy. Then Jesus went thence. He leaves them. And departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. It's a Gentile area. Lebanon, Syria. And behold, a woman of Cana. Now this is, this is kind of interesting because one of the disciples of the Canaanite, Simon, came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Now, you would think that he, you know, Thou son of David, acknowledging the Jewish kingly line in the book of Matthew. This is a Gentile's mouth. Didn't he just give a lecture about the mouth? This woman's going to open her mouth on wisdom. Isn't it just ironic how this woman comes up and speaks with her mouth and gives the disciples a great testimony of what the mouth can do? In verses 19, you can use Jesus' name as a cuss. Or in verses 22, 23, 24, 25, you can use your mouth to praise God. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. So the Gentiles are getting it. But he answered her not a word. Imagine that. I've been accused many times on the street. And he won't talk to me. He's ignoring me. I'm preaching. I'm not going to stop to talk to you. Now if you want to wait till I'm done, then I'll talk to you. That's not what that's what Jesus did. He didn't answer her. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Lord, we silence her. Will you get rid of her? That's twice the disciples want to get rid of the people. Remember after John the Baptist is killed and they go in the desert, but Lord, all these people, you get rid of them, send them away, go get some food. And he answered and said to the disciples, watch this. You think Matthew's for the church age. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You got it? Matthew's for the Jew. Here's a Gentile woman. Lord, help me. Come on, Lord, help me. Lord, will you get rid of her? I'm, I'm, I'm here for Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me, faith. But he answered and said, talking to the woman, It is not me to take the children's bread, Jewish, Israel, and cast it to the dogs. You just realize what Jesus called her? Dogs is Gentile, dead dogs. They are unclean animals, according to Levit. But you realize what he just called her? You think that word is something new? No, there it is in the Bible. I wonder what the new Bible say about that one. I know one of the Bibles say S-O-B. I'll, I'll have to check that Bible on that one. I wonder if they use that word there. That'd be interesting to check. So he says, you know what? This woman's a dog. Dogs were not friendly. Dogs were not pets. Dogs were carnivores. Dog, dogs cleaned the garbage off the streets like pigs. You know they're unclean. They didn't have them as pets. They're filthy. They have bad habits. Look at the characteristics of a dog and this is what he's calling this woman who's calling out for help to him. God is love. 
read that to a liberal and let them flip their beads. You know, I am to Jesus before I got saved in April 19th. I'm a dead, filthy, rotten dog. That's all I am. And she said, truth, Lord. Ooh, look at that. Truth, Lord. She's humbled. Yet, the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. I've been hearing what you said, Lord. I, I've, heard, I've heard your testimony. I, I've been listening to you. I've been... I'm a dog. Okay, that's fine. That's what you say. I'm a dog. You're here for Israel. It's true. And Jesus answered and said to them, What could Jesus say now? A woman, great is thy faith. Another Gentile. Another Gentile has been charged with great faith in front of Israel. You see why the, the Israelites are getting to hate this guy? Look at Jonah. Look at Peter. And their hatred for the Gentiles. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. He's saying, listen lady, what you just did, what you just said. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. She could have walked away and said, Lord, I'm just filthy. Yes, I am. You're right. But her faith. Jesus departed from thence, left it, and came nigh unto, a, unto the Sea of Galilee, and went up into a mountain and sat down there. <coughs> and great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb man uh, maimed i said let me main and many others and cast them down at jesus he cast them down Boing. and he healed them you know my question is we're one chapter over half the book of where were these people when jesus was being tried by the sanhedrin where was jesus when he was standing before Pilate where was Jesus when he was dying on the cross huh where were the people all these people that he, he, he healed and took care of where were they talk about ungrateful imagine lame and never be able to do anything in so much that the multitudes wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to behold, the lame to walk, the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Got that? Now, some reason, the order of the sicknesses are different from 30 and 31. You figure somebody who was lame, who is now able to walk, would be following Jesus all the way. You figure a guy who's blind and now can see would be there to praise God. Yet things have not changed even 2016. God will save a man's soul, but he won't stick with him. Man will leave God. God won't leave man. God will do great things in your life and you just walk away. Then, said, then Jesus called his disciples unto him. And said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they continue with me now three days, and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. Now Jesus is saying, you know, there's hungry people here. Before the disciples used it as an excuse. Let's get rid of them. They gotta go buy some food. Now Jesus said, Hey, three days, these people are hungry. You know why? Because the miracle's already been done, hasn't it? The disciples should remember. And the disciples said unto him, When should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? Chapter 14, verse 15, they're forgetful. They forgot. Uh, five loaves, two fish, twelve baskets. Did you guys forget something?
And his disciples said unto him, When shall we have so much bread in the wilderness as in the wilderness? Did you forget your Old Testament? Did you forget the manna? You didn't learn your Bible lesson, did you, in Sunday school when you were a little boy, Peter, did you? Jesus said unto them, How many loaves have ye? Ooh. Is that a clue? And they said, Seven. A couple extra. And a few little fishes. Yeah, little fish, little fishes. Well, what are you going to do, Jesus? We can't feed them. We have more than we started from the first time in the 5,000, and this is only 4,000 minimum. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. Sound familiar? And he took the seven loaves and the fishes and gave thanks. Sound familiar? And brought them and gave them his disciples and disciples to the multitude. Sound familiar? And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the broken meat that was left. Seven baskets full. Not as much. For what is much. But we didn't remember what Jesus done for us. And we lost five baskets. And we had more than what we started with. In the first time and we had less people than we had the last time there was five loaves of bread two fishes 5,000 people minimal there are seven loaves of bread a few little fish we don't know there's 4,000 and we don't get as much basket you know why you need to count your blessings and name them one by one because we may miss a blessing by forgetting a blessing that God has taught us called worry and anxiety it gets in the way of God blessing us and they that did eat were 4,000 men besides women and children and he sent away the multitude and took ship and came into the coast of Magdala so there we go